Today's topic and today's discussion surrounds a very important concept in our religion which is what we call tawakkul. Now, tawakkul if you were to simply translate it, it would be on the lines of reliance, relying on someone. And when we talk about reliance in our religion, we're talking about tawakkul ala Allah, meaning relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very important concept in our religion. And the reason is because you have to realize that there's only so much you can do as a person. And after you've exhausted your ability to do something, at that point you have to step back and say, for the rest of it, I'm going to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as human beings, there's only so much ability we hold. And you have to learn to accept that and appreciate it. Will you ever see the results of your efforts in this world? It's possible. Sometimes it may not happen. Sometimes you might want something to happen right now. You're trying so hard, you're forcing it, you're pushing it, but it's just not happening. That's where you have to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of the end result. So there is an idea of relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you towards what's good. There's an idea to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Him providing you with the means to achieve that goal. And then there's relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the goal itself. So there's three levels of reliance. The first level of reliance is reliance on Allah that He guides you towards what's right. I don't know if what, if what I'm about to say to you is right or not. For that I rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example. Or any, any, any project you take on in life, you have to rely on Allah that He gives you the tawfiq, the ability. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He quotes the famous dua in the Quran, Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. All praises to Allah who guided, him, guided us. And had it not been for His guidance, we wouldn't have been guided. So you're relying on Allah to guide you towards what needs to be done. The second thing is then, relying on Allah to help you and provide for you the means. So someone wants a job, they want a, they want a job so that they can work and provide for their family. They figured out the goal. But now the problem is they're not getting a job. They're struggling with that. So you're trying your best and then you're relying on Allah. The third is, once you've fulfilled the means, you've worked all day, now relying on Allah to give you the ends. That Ya Allah, give me the result of it. Because many times what happens is, you may work, work and work, but you won't see the result in your lifetime. You think about Ibrahim alayhi salam. He builds the Kaaba. The skyscraper of its time. Today if you stand in front of the Kaaba, someone, I consider myself somewhat of a tall person, 6'4". When I extend my hand, I'm over 7 foot, okay? And I'm trying to reach the door of the Kaaba, and I can just about touch it with the tip of my fingers. That's just the door, not the top of the structure. It's huge, it's ginormous. And considering the time that he's in, where people didn't have elevators or stairs were still, you know, finding their way and they weren't really multi-story stairs that were available. People were just climbing one story here or there. You know, when he builds the Kaaba surrounded by mountains is a huge structure. And after he builds it, he asks Allah, Ya Allah, what was this structure for? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, give the adhan. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he enters into the open area and he gives the adhan calling people for hajj. Now, did he see people respond to the Adhan of Hajj during his lifetime? No, he didn't see it. Now, for you and I, how would that end? We'd view that as failure. That I made this whole structure, nobody came. Can you believe that? Ibrahim salam didn't view that as failure because he knew that he had adopted the means. He did everything the way it should have been done. And now the result was in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet wasallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your prayer as long as you don't hurry, as long as you don't force it. The companions asked the Messenger of Allah, what does it mean to hurry and force something? The Prophet wasallam, what that means is that you say to Allah, Ya Allah, I prayed to you, I called on you and you didn't accept my prayer? Ya Allah, I called on you, you didn't accept my prayer? Ya Allah, I made dua to you, you didn't accept my prayer? Well, the acceptance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not see the example of Ayyub salam, a man who went through so much difficulty in his life that every inch of his body was covered in his disease. And it was such a difficult moment in his life and yet he remained in that physical illness for 14 years. 14 years. 
That's insane. And then don't we see the example of Yaqub alayhi salam? He loses his little munchkin, his small little son, Yusuf alayhi salam. You ask someone who has a small, beautiful, handsome son. When your child comes back from school, you want to hug them and you never want to let them go. And he loses his son and he missed his son so much that he cried and cried like any parent would. He cried so much at the loss of his child that he actually lost his eyesight in the process. And when does he get to meet his son again? 40 years later. He makes dua for 40 years. And what we learn from this, this is, and I can, con- I can quote incident after incident, story of, after story, is that you have to learn to realize your deficiencies, your weaknesses. There's only so far you can go as a person. But those deficiencies and those weaknesses can actually be very beautiful if you exert yourself completely in them. So I, for example, I have a limit, I have a weakness. Now I know that's as far as I can go, but within my boundary, I've exerted myself to make sure that I've conducted you know, whatever action it was, whatever dua it was, whatever I needed to do to the best of my ability. And at the end of it, I rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Ya Allah, I did my best. As a parent, I worked for my child, I provided for my child, I guided them, I gave them an Islamic education, Islamic environment, their guidance is in your hand. Ya Allah, I searched in a spouse, I made sure this was the right person, I did my istikhara, I did my dua, I did my istishara, I sought consultation from the people around me, and tomorrow I'm getting married, Ya Allah, I'm gonna rely on you. You know, you have to learn to, the concept of tawakkul teaches you that you don't control every detail of what happens. Tawakkul teaches us to work. Tawakkul teaches us to make an effort. That's why when we translate the word tawakkul, unfortunately, many people, they misunderstand it. They somehow believe that tawakkul and reliance on Allah means that you sit back, kick your legs up on a couch, while hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you all the victory of the world and all the treasures of the world. That it's all just going to fall to you. Reliance on Allah means that I don't need to go to work tomorrow because Allah is the one who's going to provide for me. Reliance on Allah means that I'm going to be cured somehow miraculously and I'm not going to take any medicine. You know, people, they make these statements. If Allah wants it, it'll happen. If Allah wants it, it'll happen. If Allah wants it, it'll happen. But you have to want it as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ You want change, you have to first desire that change. You have to walk towards that change. The Prophet sallallahu says, You come one hand span towards Allah, Allah will come to you one arm's length. But you have to first start that journey. You have to desire it. This is a very important discussion here. And when we look at the lives of the companions, when we look at the lives of the prophets, when we look at all the great people that came before, this was one foundational point that was developed inside all of them. And this is one thing the parents always made sure they had given their children, was to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From a young age, our parents tell us that, make dua to Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the companions, if you ever need anything, you ask Allah first. And the Prophet ﷺ said, until the point, even if you break your shoelace, you know, you know how they have these straps that go around the foot and, well, and sandals, even if your strap of your sandal breaks, the first person you ask is Allah, and then you go to the store. You're saying, Ya Allah, I want you to make this process of fixing my shoe easier. Small, mundane, simple things. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you His support, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you His help in any matter of your life, that issue will become much more easier. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's teaching this lesson to his companions from a young age. One of the greatest examples of this is the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu an. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an was a cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and was also a young companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The story is that one day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was riding on an animal and in his passenger seat was Abdullah ibn Abbas, young kid. And he's kind of like cruising, they're taking a drive around the city together, it's him and the Prophet. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he thought that, why not make the most of this moment? He started advising this young man. He said to him, Ya Ghulam, O oh young man, listen to me carefully. Ihfadillah yahfadk. Ihfadillah tajidhu tujahak. Be mindful of Allah, Allah will be mindful of you. Be careful of Allah, be mindful of Allah, and you will find Allah in front of you. What does that mean, finding Allah in front of you? Meaning Allah's help will be in the pathway that you walk on. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, 
إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ If you ever need to ask, ask Allah first. وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ And when you need assistance, ask Allah for assistance first. He's teaching this young man from a young age that you are always dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you can drill this reality into your mind, you'll always be connected to Allah. But the moment you forget that you are dependent on Allah, then you will slowly drift away from Allah. And he is drilling these pegs in Ibn Abbas from a child. He says to him, I want you to know, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتَ عَلَىٰ شَيْءٍ لَيَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكَ he said to him, if the entire world gathered together to give you something that Allah has not written for you, they can never give it to you. It's not possible. And if everyone in the world wanted to harm you, but Allah is on your side, they can't harm you. The pen has been lifted. The papers have dried. That's the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You rely on Allah, Allah will always take care of you. Now, Relying on Allah and Allah taking care of you doesn't necessarily mean that your life is going to be easy. Some people are under this delusion, they believe that because I believe in Allah, somehow my life is supposed to become miraculously a million times easier. I'm not supposed to, I'm not supposed to face challenges anymore in my life because I wear a hijab or because I have a beard that wraps around my waist. No! You know, being, having Allah with you does not mean that you're not going to face challenges in your life anymore. My teacher, he used to say this very beautifully. He used to say, having Allah with you does not mean sailing in a sea which has no waves. Having Allah with you means sailing in a ship which no storm can destroy. That's what it actually means. That those difficulties are going to continue coming. But as they come, now you're inside a ship which no storm can destroy. You have Allah with you. And you, you're telling yourself, you know that whatever the outcome is, it was determined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was aware of it before I, before I even came into existence. The calamity I'm going through, Ya Allah, I don't ask for calamity, but if you're going to put me through calamity, I will be patient because I know that you will reward me fully for it. And any person that came in the history of mankind and trusted Allah, Allah never ever let that person's trust down. Never. The Hafiz before us, the brother before us who recited, he recited the verses regarding the story of Musa alayhi salam's mother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands her to take her child and put him in the water. Which mother has a heart to do that? To take her child and put him in the water? You would think to yourself that I'd rather trust myself, the mother, with the child in some water. What is the water going to do? And I'm sure she didn't run any safety tests on the basket whether the water was going to leak through or not. You know, it wasn't like she had some kind of floater she was putting Musa alayhi salam in. It was a basket, she put him in and that's done. How does a mother do that? How she does that is because she trusts Allah. She knew the command came from Allah and that was it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never fail her. How does a father Ibrahim alayhi salam hold his son by the hand and take him to be sacrificed? I don't know how that's done. If I hold my six-year-old son's hand with the intention to even strike him, my hand begins to shake. How do you take a blade and put it against your own child's neck? How you do that is you know that you trust Allah and Allah will never fail you. How do you get launched into the fire and be ready for it? And you're in the air and you're landing in the fire and you're not even worried about what's going to happen because you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does it happen to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he's outside Taif covered in his blood and his adopted son Zayd bin Haritha radiallahu anh, his foster son who the Prophet took care of. He says that I saw the Prophet that day, he was crying. He was covered in tears. He raised his hands and made dua to Allah. He said, Ya Allah, I have a complaint to you. And the complaint he made to Allah on the day of judgment was, on that day was, he said, Allahumma ashku ilayka du'fa quwwati. Oh Allah, I complain to you that I was a weak person. I'm sorry I wasn't strong enough in my approach. He doesn't put the blame on Allah. That's how we run. You know, we put the blame on Allah right away. He doesn't do that, no. Oh Allah, this isn't your fault, this is my fault. I wasn't strong enough. But if you're not angry with me and if you accept this action of mine, then I'm ready to do it all over again if you want me to. And I know that good is gonna come out of this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed those people with good. You have to always remember that there's only so far you can go with your actions. Then after that, you have to learn to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the principle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in the Qur'an is, وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Whoever relies on Allah, Allah will suffice that person. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ amri. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill every matter of His. قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرًا For everything, there is a specific place and time. 
Never be despondent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Now just to bring back a discussion I just talked about very briefly right now, I want to bring, it, bring this back and be very clear about it. We are not advocating that people don't take means. What we're telling you is adopt the means. You want to become a physician in your life? Adopt the means. Take your classes, take your exams, work hard, study hard, but at the end of it, let the end result be in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If for whatever reason you don't become a physician, don't view yourself as a failure. Because your job and my job is to only try. The results were never in our hands. We never had control over them. We never had any say over them. Those results were always with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.